Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F-14B Tomcat and we're going to look at using the air-to-air -air missile AIM-7 Sparrow. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the armament screen. We can have the Sparrows on six pylons. So we've got 1B, 8B and then 3 through to 6. We've got one variant we can choose from at the time of making this video, March 2019. And that is the AIM-7 Mike. So let's get equipped with six of those. Okay. Request refueling. Before we go any further, let's have a look at today's controls to fire the missile is a pull of the trigger. To select the Sparrow, we're going to have select Sparrow or Phoenix missiles. To get an STT radar lock from the pilot's position, I'll probably use PAL, target designate forward. That should do us for today. So the AIM-7 Sparrow is what we call a FOX-1 type missile, a semi-active radar homing missile. This means that it does not have its own onboard radar. Instead, when it's fired, it relies on guidance information from our Org-9 radar, and it will rely on that guidance information from firing all the way up until impact. To be able to fire this missile, we need to get an STT, a single target track. We can't fire this type of missile, or any FOX-1, with a track while scan. With regards to range, technically the maximum ballistic range is for about 40 miles. However, the maximum realistic range in an actual combat is going to be about 20 miles in optimal conditions at medium altitudes uh, against a head-on aspect aircraft. And on the other scale, if we were chasing an aircraft down at low level, then the maximum range is approximately 4 miles. Now, these missiles do require preparation. So once they're equipped, we're going to press this missile prep here, turn it to on. I believe this can be done on the ground. I've never had any problems doing it on the ground. And this starts, if you like, a warm-up cycle. It will warm up the electronics inside the AIM-7s. It will warm up their gyros. And it will also tune them to our Org-9 radar. They have to be tuned. Now, I'm not sure if this is something that has to be done in more modern planes, like an F-15 or an F-18, but in the Tomcat, it needs doing. Regards to how long the missile prep takes, we'll know because these pylon indicators that we've got down here will show when the missiles are ready. So I'll show the difference when they are ready. There are two different modes of firing this missile. First is normal. With normal, then, as said before, it uses an STT lock on a target and it will track direct to that target. If for some reason we can't get an STT lock on a target, then we can fire in a mode called boresight mode, or flood mode as some people call it. Now if I overlay this image here, it shows the search area of the boresight mode. We can see that the you can see that it has a search width of 8 degrees, a total search height of what is that, 35 degrees. And the lower half of it is centered around the ADL, the cross on the HUD in air-to-air -air mode and it reaches up to kind of 30 degrees up here. If we fire the missile in boresight mode, we do not have to have a target locked in SCT. Instead, it will track the strongest signal that it receives in that boresight area. So this could be used, for instance, if we were trying to get a lock on a target, but we couldn't get an STT lock because maybe he was, it was notching and he was low, and therefore we would put him in this search area that we've just described and pull the trigger and the missile and assuming that there wasn't a contact that's closer than him in the search area then the missile would automatically lock onto him and seek him down okay so we're going to select our weapon now we usually do this in the air but just to make it easier we're going to put it in air to air mode we're going to select the sparrow you can see if we press the button sparrow select button again it goes to phoenixes and it's got to cross through it just because we've got a master arm off and we're on the ground. You can see we have six selected. Okay, so the next thing is to get airborne and try them out. Okay, we're in the air now. The first thing we're going to do is turn our master arm on. You can see the cross has gone through our sparrow there. If we look at our ACM symbology here, our pylons are showing different symbology, showing that the missiles are tuned in, warmed up and ready to go. And that 1B is the selected pylon. We cannot cycle through the selected pylons. The WCS web control system will choose which missile to select and fire. So we'll first show firing the sparrow in normal mode through an STT lock. So to get an STT lock, we can either use the pilot's commands, so for instance a PAL or a high search or a low search, or we can use the Rio, we can access him through Jester, or we can go and use the Rio commands ourselves, and we're going to go and do that because it's more fun. Okay, we're in the back now. Now the first thing I want to show is that, well, firstly, out of interest, the uh, Rio can launch the missile from here, but we're not going to be looking at the, that today. But here is something that's important. The missile can be used in two modes, normal, or Sparrow Pulse Doppler is the upper one here. This lower thing is, is regards a different missile. 
in normal mode, the missile uses CW. I believe that's continuous wave function. If we wanted it to use pulse Doppler function, then we could go in the up position. Now, I don't actually know what the real differences between these modes are, but that's just something to bear in mind. Okay, so back to the TID. Let's look at these targets. So we've got these various targets around here. And what we can do is show the maximum range of our missile, the, the, i.e. the range we need to be in to hit one of these guys here, known as our max, and we can do that by clicking launch zone here. Now you can see that the targets now have these long lines dangling from them, and that represents how far we can fire our missile away from. So this target is, uh, well, we're going to see, shall we? He's 69 or 70 miles away at the moment, and we would have to get close enough to him so that this, the bottom of this line here, touches our aircraft which is there before we could fire so that's more like 20 miles something like that so to actually fire the weapon we're going to lock there's a guy here just above our carrier by the looks of it so i'm going to lock him up instead so i'm gonna whoops wrong guy i'm gonna hook him there i want a uh, pulse doppler stt we can see there's 16,000 feet 16 miles away so well inside firing range i reckon 50 miles back in the cockpit we've got new symbology we have to look over first of all we've got our diamond designator so this is showing where the target is so the target is in the middle of that diamond there if the target was off the side of the hud then the diamond would be on the side of the hud chasing him as close as it could get showing you to turn which direction to get to the target next we've got our range this is a dynamic range scale and it will change depending on your actual range currently it's at 20 miles so that is 20 miles there that down there is zero miles. It's kind of hard to see it's getting off the bottom of the HUD. We've got our R-min and our max markers. Our min here shows the minimum distance you can be at to fire the missile and for it to work. Our max the other way around. Uh, this is showing us the maximum range, ballistic range we can be. You can see our actual marker is between our max and our min, so we can fire the missile. We're currently at a range of uh, 18, 16, 14, about 14 and a half miles from the target. Next, we've got a closure rate here in hundreds of knots. So you can see zero. Uh, opening minus 200 knots, closing 1,000 knots, and we're currently closing at 800 knots. Now the next thing is very hard to miss, but very important, our steering cue. It's an upside down T here. This shows us our optimal shot based on the target's aspect. So very rarely will the target be, be actually coming directly uh, towards us. Usually it's going to be moving slightly left or right or up or down, and we have to give the missile lead to make it an optimum shot. We can use the HUD and or the VDI for this. So if we were using the HUD, we want to position our aircraft marker here. So this dot here, basically, so that the dot goes in the middle of the T. That will position us optimally in terms of azimuth and elevation for lead on the shot. You can see this guy is moving almost straight towards us, so we're not going to have to put very much lead on this, but what we'll do after this is go find a guy uh, attacking from the side, and you can see why it's so important there. Uh, down here on the VDI, you've got all the same symbology. It's a bit more clumped together with thick lines, so it's harder to see, but it's all there, including an ASC circle here. Um, now, we don't get the ASC circle in the HUD, but the point of an ASE circle is that we want to put this chap here the T, the shooting, uh, the, sorry, the aiming cue, which I can't see in here at the moment, but we want to put it in inside the ASE circle, ideally in the centre, to take an optimal lead shot. So let's unpause now. Let's uh, get this uh, T in the right position and then take the shot. You can take the shot without putting the searing cue in the in the right position, but it'll be a less optimal shot. Once now we've got it there, we're going to press and hold. The trigger target 12 miles until the missile comes out and there it goes it's come off the rails i'm just going to turn jester off because that's going to drive us all nuts let's follow that missile now and the boomy we've got him so next i'm going to go and find another target and i'll attack him from the side to show off the steering cue a bit more okay so we've got another target locked up here it's just getting within uh, 20 miles I've got a high closure rate, and you can see his steering cue is right off to the left in this, this case. This is indicating that his movement is heavily right to left at the moment, so we've got to add lots of lead for this missile because it's got to shoot out in front of him. We are below our max, so we can fire, so let's go and um, put our cue in place. So this time it's really extreme. Look how far we're having to aim in front. Let's get there, inside the ASE. There it is, it's that upside down T. It's just a lot bigger in here, that's why it looks so like that. So we can, if we couldn't use the HUD for some reason, the VDI is even easier to use, really. Okay, that's where we're going to aim. We're going to let it get a bit closer so we don't have so much missile travel this time. Okay, within 10 miles now. 
Okay, let's take that shot and follow it up. Press and hold trigger. Off he goes. And it's going to chase that up visually. I think he might have dodged it, you know. Oh, we got him. Right, so that's showing using the STT lock in the normal mode for the AIM-7. Next we want to show using the bore side mode. So what we're going to do now is unlock the target. We're going to go into bore side mode. Let me just scratch that target. Okay, it's no longer locked. So now we're going to pretend that we can't get a lock on him for some reason. And we're going to go and use the bore sight method. And in this case what we want to do is place the target in that theoretical range that we looked at earlier. And just push and hold the trigger with bore sight selected obviously. So just above the just above the ADL cross will do. Slow down, press and hold trigger. And as long as it was in parameters, it should track him. And it is. And he's a dead man. And let's just try again another one. Because it can go 30 degrees up, remember. Uh, let's just uh, let's try that. Let me just level out. Okay, that's a bit more sensible. So let's see if we can fire ball sight up to there. It's all the way. Up it goes to get him. Thump! Haha! <laughs> Lovely. So that shows a couple of examples using the STT lock, then using the bore sight uh, mode without using a lock. And that's it. That's all, all this to the AIM 7. I hope that helps and see you later.